Right now, I'm going to show you an exciting new feature in Photoshop 2020, which enables you to warp images in a way we never could before. Hey, I'm Colin Smith from PhotoshopCafe.com, and today we're looking at new features of Photoshop 2020. So we're going to have a look at the new warp tool. And so we're going to work on this image here. We've got a dinosaur sitting on top of a layer. So you always want to have a new layer when you work on this. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this look more ferocious and we're also going to add a realistic cast shadow. So the first thing we want to do is go into free transform mode. The way to do that is to hit command T and that would be control T on windows. And then you see the bounding box. I'm sure you've seen this before with the nine handles. So this is where you could scale and rotate your images. But if you want to see enhanced tools, right click and we've got other options. Go down to warp and then click. Now we're inside the new warp tool. Okay, it looks a little bit like the old one, but there's some significant changes. So we can go up here and under grid, it says default, but there's also custom. So we can go in here and we can set a custom grid or we can choose one of the presets. We're going to grab three by three and we can see it starts with a nice grid. Now here's what's new and exciting. We can click on these three tools here, we can split it. So if we choose here, we get a crosshair, which enables us to um, subdivide one of these squares here, one of these grids, and we can do horizontal and vertical. We can choose to do horizontal, or we can do vertical. But there's a quicker way to do it. Rather than using these, I'm just gonna turn those off and we're gonna go down into the image and what we're going to do is hold down the Alt or the Option key. And notice as I do that, see, now we can subdivide those grids. Now, if you move close to a horizontal line, we get vertical only. And if we move close to a vertical line, we get horizontal only. So why don't we split this dinosaur's head right there above the mouth. And then we're going to split it here on the head. So now we've added these extra grid points exactly where we want them. Now you can drag on the points themselves and let's make this mouth a little bit more ferocious or you can grab down on the actual surface and you can even go in here and you can choose these Bezier curves and get very precise adjustments by working with those. Let's move to the top part. Let's grab that point, drag it out. Let's make the head a little bit taller and just play around with that. Just changing the shape. All right, we've got a much more ferocious looking mouth. Why don't we make the body look a little bit more um, solid? So we're going to go here. We're going to make it bigger, go up there. And now we've got a much more formidable looking dinosaur. So let's hit enter to apply it. Great. All right. So now we've got this really fierce looking dinosaur, but it's kind of floating in the air right now. Let's add a realistic car shadow to anchor it on the ground and give it a sense of distance and scale. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and grab a layer style with our dinosaur layer selected. We're going to choose the FX and no, we're not going to go to drop shadow. I've got a new way of creating a cast shadow, which I think you're going to find very realistic. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose a gradient overlay. So if you look in the real world and you see a cast shadow where something's anchored to the ground, you'll notice that the shadow is sharper edged and darker the closer it is to the subject. Then as it goes away into the distance, it fades, it becomes softer and more transparent, kind of like fog. So we're going to recreate that effect right now. So as you can see, it's actually working pretty good. We've got gradient. So what you want to do is click on the gradient there and you'll see a black to white gradient. We'll start with that. Now we want to modify this gradient itself. So what we're going to do is just click inside the gradient and the gradient editor will pop up. Now the way to change the color of the gradient is to just click on these stops. So we're going to choose the white stop. Notice that our Popper comes here, our color picker, and now we're going to make this a gray. Now look on the shadow there. We can see that's looking good. Click OK twice. Now, if you want this more abrupt, you can adjust the scale. So if we do the scale smaller, we can see we get a more abrupt gradient. And as you make it larger, it's more gradual. So just kind of blend it so we get a nice even gradient going to a light color at the top, dark color in the bottom. Click OK. Great. So what we've got now is we've got our layer style. Now what we want to do is create a brand new layer from that layer style so we can separate it from our dinosaur and apply the shadow. So we choose effects, right click, and then go down to see where it says create layers. 
click on there, now we get a new layer on top. But we're not done yet, we want to make this just a pixel layer with the shape of the dinosaur. So we want to load in the shape, so see our layer there, we're going to hit Control or Command, hold that down, you'll see that little icon, that means when we click, now we load the selection. So our selection is now active, but we want to apply it to our gradient. So click on the gradient, make sure that that's now active, that layer, and then we just create a layer mask. So you see this little icon there, click there to create a layer mask. Notice the layer mask is in the shape of the gradient now. But what we want to do is we want to merge that together into just one pixel layer. So the way to do that is to right click, and then we choose apply layer mask. There we go, now we've got the layer, and what we want to do is just drag it underneath our dinosaur. So let's just click and drag, see that little line will appear, release, and now we've got a dinosaur and underneath we've got our gradient. Great, now let's turn that gradient into a realistic cast shadow. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back once again into free transform and that's control T, command T on the Mac. It's worth memorizing that one. And of course, all the good menus are under the right click. But before we do that, what we're gonna do is we actually just want to scale this down. So we just want to stretch it. So if we pull it, notice everything scales proportionally. Now, this was changed in CC 2019. If I hold the shift key, I can drag it down. Now, if you remember how this used to work, in the past, the free transform used to be the default behavior, and you held down shift to constrain it. Now, some people have been struggling to make that adjustment, and Adobe have dropped a great new feature in here. If you look at the top bar here, notice this little link icon. This is always there, but this was just if we chose to scale here. Now, if we turn that off, so now it's not linked, notice now it goes back to the old behavior, and I don't have to hold down the shift key. So we're just going to drag that down there. And the next thing I want to do, though, is if you look at the light, the light's coming a little bit from the left side. You can see how the hotspots are heading near and the shadows are there. So that means it's coming from the left. So we want to kind of move this over. We want to kind of skew it. So right click and choose skew. Now we're using the skew tool. What you need to do is grab one of these middle handles. See that? It's not really going to do it on the corner. We need to do it in the middle. And you'll see the arrows. So we click and just drag to the right. And notice what it's doing is it's skewing our shadow. So let's click OK. Great. Now we have this gradient on the ground. We want to turn it into a shadow. And so we need transparency. The way to do that is to just go up in the Layers panel, and we're going to choose Multiply Blend node. Notice now we've got this great shadow on the ground. It's a little bit hard. So what we want to do now is we want to soften this shadow. But we don't want to soften it around the feet. We only want to soften it as it goes away from the dinosaur for more realism. So we don't want to just blur it. What we want to do is go up under Filter, and we're going to go down to Blur Gallery. In Blur Gallery, we've got Field Blur. Turn it on, and you'll see this little pin right in the middle. If I drag, I can increase the amount of blur, or I can decrease it. So what I want to do is I want to find a blur that looks about right to me. So maybe a little bit more about there is looking good, but up the front, we don't want it to be as soft. So what we do is just click down here, it creates a second point. Now with the second point, all we need to do is reduce the amount of blur. And notice now it blends between the two. So that's how this works. If I move this around, you can see how that blur works like that. It works between the two points. So you can just adjust these until that blur looks the way you want it to. And I think about there looks pretty nice. Let's click OK to apply it. Almost there. What we want to do is maybe drop the opacity a little bit if that shadow is a little too strong. Let's just go up under opacity and we'll just bring that down a little bit. That looks great. There's one last thing though. Notice here it's kind of not right on the feet. And you probably find this happens a lot when you create blurs. Well, here's a cool thing. If we hit Control T for free transform once again, right click, let's go back to that warp. And now with warp, we can just move the parts that we want exactly where we want them to go and see how we can get the shadow to fit perfectly. 
Now, one of the things I do want to do here is notice how it kind of goes up the curve. We might want to kind of change that shadow there. Well, if we hit Alter Option, we can click there and we can click there and create this little grid subdivided and we can drag that out individually and move that up however we want. And that will actually work on any kind of shape, you know, when you're putting that shadow onto an irregular background, hit enter. And now we're done. So I'm curious, what do you guys think of that? Did you learn anything new? Let me know in the comments underneath. And if you guys love these Photoshop tutorials, uh, consider hitting that subscribe button right now and you'll get a new tutorial from me every single week. Ring the notification bell so you know when I upload it, which is every Tuesday. <laughs> and of course, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. Thanks guys for watching and until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.